Hey everybody, so today we are going to be talking about triangulation and information literacy. So triangulation is taking three different points of data or three different methods of gathering data to understand how well they all come away with the same or very similar results. The reason that you want to do that is to have more confidence in the data and the insights that you are coming away with. This is also something that you can use in your everyday life. So if you are going through and you're doing Google searches or maybe somebody tells you something and you want to find out how much confidence you can have in that statement, a great way of doing that is triangulation. So today we are going to be walking through that process and we are going to be using information literacy. Information literacy is essentially what data points can you find in everyday information that will help you have more confidence in the information that you find in your day-to-day -day lives. So with that, let's go get started. Okay, so today we are going to be using Science Daily as our trigger. So Science Daily doesn't actually create a lot of the data itself. They are using research that has already been published. So that is my first clue. Normally when I'm looking at information, the first things that I look at is what is the source and what is the date? So the reason that I look at the source is, is it a trustworthy source? Is it a notable source? Or is it a source that is a little bit more questionable? So here, Science Daily is pretty reputable. You can go and see, there are a lot of people that are citing these articles. There are a lot of research papers that are being uh, synthesized by the writers of Science Daily. Okay, so that's great. Now we gotta probably dig a little deeper. We have to be our inner Batman or our inner Sherlock Holmes and do a little bit of investigation. Second thing I look at is the date. So this article, if I came across it, now the thing is, it's 2020. If I'm looking at the date of this article, it's 2007. So that is a significant amount of time. Usually when you're looking at something that is medical or scientific or anything that is essentially um, in the STEM discipline, anything that is older than two years is not necessarily questionable it's just maybe outdated so you do want to usually find research that's in that two year mark so that you know you're getting the most up-to-date information because as we all know science is it never stops so there could be more evidence that is found later in the years in between 2007 and today that might actually refute the findings of this article so let's go to the very bottom of this story and we can see that this is something that is coming from Brown University. Okay, so let's go and find that article. Where might I go? It doesn't actually give me the exact title of the article. So a good place to start is Google Scholar. All right, so we were seeing that there was something about vitamin C cancer, Brown University. Let's see what happens. And remember, we saw this was from 2007, so we can actually limit to 2007. If you have access to a discovery service for research, that is probably a better place to go and look, but we're going to be using only open source in this video. So here we can see this article seems to be about the right date. See, we see 2007. The third thing to keep in mind in your triangulation is do the resources match up? So we looked at one resource already and it was looking at vitamin C and we were looking at toxicities and all kinds of things that are not so good. It sounds like this one is also talking about that. Later on in the video, we are also going to be looking at a third article that has a lot of the same properties being described. So that is three. So when you get to the third area of triangulation, you also want to find at least three other resources that are also describing the same subject matter in similar, if not the same ways. That gives you more confidence in what you're looking at. So it looks like this one, based on what I'm seeing here, might be the article that we're looking for. Hey, remember we had a clue that was from Brown University. So if we go in and look at the individuals, we can see where they are from. This person is from Brown University, and this person is also from Brown University. So most likely this is the article that Science Daily was using. So now what? Now we found the article and it's talking about vitamin C potentially increasing um, the rate of cancer. So first of all, this article is written as if I am a medical professional or somebody that understands medical. 
I'm not, I'm a lay person. So what I would do is I would do a search and I would look for method. So I'm going to look at the method section and see, you know, how did they actually conduct the study? When you are looking at studies specifically or data sources in general, you also want to look at the sample size. If you're looking at anything in the machine learning area, you want to make sure that the sample size is big enough to be a power study or it's going to be a representative sample, something that's actually going to be meaningful when you are doing a research study. You want to look at the sample size. Is it big enough? Um, is it a representative sample? Is it a power study? So, you know, is that representative sample going to be predictive of the full population that would be affected by this research? I'm not really seeing a lot of that because this article is in a medical journal. People that are reading this are most likely people that are from the medical field. It's just very hard for me to read this and understand what I'm looking at. So let's try a different tactic. So what we can do is we can go back to Google Scholar and we can see how often it's been cited. So this article has been cited 62 times. So this is another piece of information literacy. When something is being cited, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's good or bad. When something is being cited, it could actually be a lot of people refuting what was found in that article and their findings are not as relevant as, as other people are finding, or it could mean that this was a groundbreaking study and everybody is citing it. It has such a big impact on, on, on the research. You can see some of these others from 2007 have quite a few more. This one has 52. So you can go through and kind of get an estimation is 62 a decent number for things that were published in that year. And you can see, yeah, pretty much. I mean, this stuff was all about cancer and ascorbic acid, also known as vitamin C. Now, what we can do is we can actually click on the cited and we can actually read through, okay, what are other articles on that same topic or that is referencing that, that topic, that article? What are they saying? So we're looking at for nickel, arsenic, and chromium. Chromium, if you remember, is what the article uh, from Brown was talking about. Okay, so that's interesting. It's talking about chromium. It doesn't say anything specifically about vitamin C, although one hop away, if you're looking at knowledge graph information, would be chromium is in vitamin C. So by, by default, it has some kind of connection, but what is the strength of that connection? So it does seem like chromium, at least, has some connection to cancer. It does not necessarily mean that vitamin C is the cause of those things. So we're seeing there's something about chromium. Let's go see what else has chromium food that we, we ingest. So I'm just going to do a basic Google search right now. If you have more sophisticated means, by all means use them. I found an article about chromium. Now, I'm going to look at the source, just like I did before. This is the National Institute of Health. This is a very reputable source. Cool. Okay, so I feel like I have more trust in this source. Now I'm going to look at a date. Is there a date on here? Let's see. Sometimes they have an update at the end of the article. Let's go check that out. Ooh, it's a long article. Updated October 1st, 2020. That's awesome. That was very recent. It does have a disclaimer here that this is not medical device, nor is this video. This video is about fact checking things, <laughs> not necessarily actually giving any advice on medical things. And now let's look to see what other things do we ingest in our diet that have chromium in it. Oh, orange juice. Okay, orange juice has 2.2, so it's, it's up there. But so does grape juice, ham, English muffins and brewer's yeast, which by the way is in beer. It also looks like there is a lot of other things that have chromium in them. So let's see what this article has to say about cancer specifically. Here it's saying that there are no adverse effects having been linked to high intakes of chromium from food or supplements. Okay, so this is more recent. It is from um, a reputable source. And we are seeing that while there is some connection, it might not be as strong as, as we would think. So the interesting thing is if you go and you do a search for the exact opposite of the finding, vitamin C is actually prescribed to a lot of, a lot of cancer patients, uh, orange juice, that sort of thing, because there are other benefits. 
So all in all, especially when you're looking at anything medical, you have to understand that one finding is not the be all end all. There are a lot of different things that go into um, what is healthy and what is not. Always consult your medical professional and not just do Google searches. But in this case, if I was literally just trying to find out how confident I was in that original article that I read, I used my triangulation to understand that while there is a tentative connection between those two things, it doesn't seem like it's anything that I necessarily need to be concerned with. So is it bad research? No, if it's something that I want to investigate more, I should go and talk to my doctor. All right, so this is just one example. You can use triangulation. Basically, if you can find three different sources that match up, if you can find three different uh, approaches to checking that information, all of those are very valuable. When you're looking at information literacy, remember reputable sources, make sure that you check the date, and do the resources match up? Let's more credibility into what they are saying. Okay, so with that, I hope you've enjoyed this. This was just a surface level review on how you can use triangulation in your everyday life, and I hope you find some use for it. So thank you very much, and I'll catch you next time.